This is a short video going over the Cooperative Compass lesson. In this lesson, students will participate in a physically active orienteering exercise. After they master the basic compass and pacing techniques, they will rely on their teamwork skills to complete an orienteering course. There are four main objectives of this lesson. One, to define orienteering and two related terms. Two, to describe the function of three compass components. Three, demonstrate the proper use of a compass. And four, calculate an estimate of their pace. Orienteering is a skill of using a map and a compass to find your way from basically one point to another. In this exercise, they will just be using a compass and we'll go over what they'll be doing out in one of the compass courses. In the introduction, be sure to go over nature's compasses and the history of orienteering. In this lesson, it will be important to go over the definition of orienteering, which is the skill of using a map and a compass to go from one point to another, talk about the history, nature's compasses, and more of the background information you'll find in reading the lesson. The major component of this lesson is using the compass, so it's important to go over the parts. You will have both actual compasses and a large demonstration compass in your kit. This will be great for demonstrating the parts with a large group. Pass out a compass to every student, have them put the compass on. It will help them keep the compass facing the right direction. When going through the compass, start with the parts. The base plate is the part of the compass which everything sits on. On the base plate, you'll find the direction of travel arrow. This is the arrow in which you will follow. From that, you'll have the movable dial, which has the degrees or bearings in it, 0 to 360. Inside the movable dial, you'll find the floating needle, magnetic needle. Red will always point north, and obviously black will always point south. Underneath that, you'll find a red arrow inside the movable dial, which is your orienteering arrow. Make sure to go over this and make sure the students understand that vocabulary clearly. From there on, you can teach them how to take a bearing. From this, you'll have the students stand up, holding the compass flat, as a tilted compass is of no use to us, it will not work properly. Have them dial in a bearing or a, or a degree. So for example, have them dial in 320. And they move the movable dial until it lines up with the mark, that which is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. Have them stand up. Now, inevitably, some of them are going to want to move the compass. Make sure they move their entire body until the red arrow is in the red shed. Common poem, red is in the shed. They'll move and have them point to the direction in which they travel. Give them several of these examples. Try to give them an odd number, like 179, because each tick mark is 2 degrees, so then they would have to line it up in between two of the marks. Even throw something at them with a degree over 360 to see if they're paying attention. Once you feel comfortable with their ability to use the compass, then the second part of this lesson is calculating an estimate of their pace, and we'll demonstrate that outside. So here we are outside where we laid out 100 feet of tape so the students can calculate an estimate of their pace. What you'll have the students do is walk along the 100 foot tape, count how many paces, which is two steps, then take that number and divide it into 100 to get how many feet are in their pace. Once every student is comfortable with that, you can then move out to the Three. orienteering course. Here we are at the ridge course, which is the harder of the two courses as the trees are far, farther apart than the subnivian course on the other side of Sweats. There are six starting trees at each course, all marked with a pink flag and these metal discs. These metal discs are on every of the tree, every single one of the trees that the students will need to find. When they're out here, there are boundaries. There's no need for them to go towards over the road or into water. So tell them don't hitch a ride and don't go for a swim and they'll be fine. There's one ending tree for all six of these courses and it's right, right over there. They'll start to figure that out if they do have a chance to do more courses, but it's a good way to stay in this area and help students out if they need help. The courses also have six cards to go along with them to tell them obviously where to go and how many, how far they need to go and their degrees. There's a great technique for doing the compass course and I'll bring Ashley over to, to help us out. On this first one, the wolf course, from tree 310 to 311, they need to dial in 189 degrees, which we have already done. Then Ashley and I will go and stand in front of the tree and begin this leap. One, project. two, three. 
So now that we have our degrees dialed in, I'm going to send Ashley on ahead, counting the, her paces as we need to go 90 feet to our destination. As she's walking, I'll make sure she's staying in line with my direction of travel arrow, and she's not veering off. So right now I would say, Ashley, please stop and take one step to your right to bring her back in line. As she's going and counting, when she gets closer, hopefully she'll start looking around at trees to find the metal tag. Ashley, do you see a metal tag? I found the tree. Excellent, and that is a great way to be successful at the Compass course. Once students have completed one or more courses, bring some time back to discuss what happened. Did they notice anything cool while they were out in the woods? Did they find this task easy? What was difficult? What impacts might we have when doing activities like this? Just kind of go over the entire experience and remember to review those objectives and you will have a successful challenge course lesson and the kids will have a lot of fun.